We are going to look at uh, conservation of energy. which is nothing but uh, the first law of thermodynamics, right? Okay. Uh, so, the conservation of energy states that the, it is also a rate equation like the conservation of mass and the conservation of momentum and it says that the rate of uh, increase of energy, right, for a fluid particle, we just say Fp here, equals the net rate of heat added to the fluid particle plus the net rate of work done on the fluid particle, okay. Uh, just like before, uh, we can write the rate of increase of energy on a unit volume basis, right. So, then this gives us uh, rho times d E by d T, where E is the energy of the fluid particle, right, that is the stored energy of the fluid particle and uh, d E d T is the rate and multiplying by density, we have the uh, rate of increase of energy on a volume basis, okay. <coughs> And uh, coming to the two components we have here, the net rate of heat added, we represent with Q dot and the net rate of work done, we can write it as W dot, okay. So, we will first look at uh, the net rate of work done on the fluid particle by the several forces that are acting on it and thereafter we look at the net rate of heat added to the fluid particle, okay. So, coming to the <coughs> net rate of work done on the fluid particle we see that we have already uh, known that the surface forces that act on it do the work on the fluid particle, right, and also the body forces as well. So, first like a look at the, the work done by the a surface and body forces uh, that contribute to the uh, work on the fluid particle, okay. So, essentially uh, we, I am not going to redraw the picture that we have drawn in the last class. Uh, we have noted that for a fluid particle or for a fluid element, we have uh, several forces acting on it, right. If I consider the x direction, the forces acting in the x direction, so uh, what we can say is uh, the rate of work done is nothing but the force acting on the fluid particle multiplied by the velocity in the direction of the force, right. That is the work done uh, by a particular force, right. So, that is uh, we agree upon. So, essentially force multiplied by the velocity uh, in the same direction would give us uh, the uh, would give us the uh, net rate of work done contributed by the forces in particular direction, okay. So, essentially uh, we do not want to read write, but rather we want to consider the uh, forces that are acting in the x direction first, okay. So, if we consider the x direction, if you recall the fluid element from the last lecture, we had uh, six phases east, west, north, south and front end back, if I consider the west phase, what are the forces that were acting on it only in the x direction? We had a pressure force and we had a, a normal stress, right, that is tau xx. Now, if I use arrows to indicate the direction, uh, on the west phase, we had a pressure that is acting on it in the positive x direction, right, by an amount that is p minus partial p partial x times delta x by 2, right. We are getting this delta x by 2 because the P is defined at x, y, z and uh, the west phase is located at x minus delta x by 2, right, comma y, z, right, okay. And then, uh, so this is the pressure that is acting on the west phase. Uh, when we multiply this by the area, right, that was delta y delta z, that was the force that is acting on the uh, west phase, right, corresponding to pressure. And then we had uh, uh, another force that is acting on the west phase that was the tau xx, right, and it was acting in the negative x direction, right. If I consider x to be positive in this direction and this was tau xx minus partial partial x tau xx times delta x by 2, multiplying this with delta y delta z would give me the force acting in the uh, x direction on the west phase, right. Now, we are interested in of course calculating the 
rate of work done. So, we have to calculate the force multiplied by the velocity in the particular direction. So, I have to essentially multiply these two forces with u, right? That will give me the rate of work done uh, for this. So, what I would do is I would uh, just like before, <coughs> I am going to construct uh, for the west phase, I am going to say that uh, the work done, rate of work done for the west phase uh, on the west phase by the pressure force would be P times U, okay, that is the rate of work done at the centroid of this fluid element and then we want to calculate the rate of work done on the west phase. So, it will be P U minus partial partial x times P times U delta x by 2 times delta y delta z, right? That would be the rate of work done. Now, of course, you can do this in couple of ways. One is to uh, proceed the way we have done, essentially multiply P times U, calculate the rate of work done at the centroid and then use Taylor series expansion and calculate the phase or you could even start off with U and P separately at the centroid, right? And then reconstruct them on the phases and then multiply them together, right? In which case you would have uh, this uh, P minus partial P partial X times delta X by 2 delta Y delta Z uh, times you would have U minus, right, partial partial X uh, U delta X by 2 as well, right? We had this before. So, you could even multiply this and get the same answer as we get here, okay? So, that would be the same that you can verify. All right. So, this is, this is uh, related to the pressure. Now, if we go back to the tau xx, what will be the rate of work done by tau xx? You, we just have to again multiply that with the direction of, right, the velocity in that particular direction that will be tau xx times u minus partial partial x tau xx times u delta x by 2 times delta y delta c, right? So, this is the net rate of work done by p and tau xx, okay? Question still here, this part, okay? All right. So, then uh, I am not going to write the forces again. So, what we will do is we will try to kind of look up directly from your notebook and write the net rate of work done on the other phases, okay? So, we have now constructed this for the west phase. Uh, if I do it for the east phase, what would be the uh, net rate of work done? This, time, this will be P times U plus partial partial X P times U delta x by 2 times delta y delta z, right? This was acting in which direction? In the negative x direction, right? So, this was acting in the negative direction. So, the work done would be with a, with a minus, right? Because this was minus, okay? Uh, and then what will be the other force? Tau xx, right? Uh, so, that would be tau xx times u plus partial partial x tau xx u times delta x by 2 times uh, delta y delta c and this would be a plus or a minus. This will be a plus because it is acting in the positive x direction, so it will be plus, okay? So, these are the uh, on the east phase, right? And then we have uh, two more forces, one on the north phase and one on the south phase, right? Similarly, we had two more forces, one on the front and one on the back as well, okay? So, essentially that would be uh, if I, if we write those together. Uh, that would give us on the north phase, uh, what was the force we had? Tau y x, right? That is essentially acting on the positive north face in the direction of x times which uh, velocity should I multiply this with? I should multiply this with v because, right? Uh, because y, but we are still looking at the forces in the x direction, right? So, I should still multiply this with U, right? We are looking at forces. This is acting in which direction? In the x direction. This will only do a work if you multiply this with U, right? So, I multiply this with U and plus partial partial x tau y x u times delta x by, this would be delta y by 2, right? We are constructing on the north face and then multiply this with delta x delta z to get the net rate of work done, okay? Similarly, uh, are there any other forces acting on the north face in the x direction? No, right? So, in the south direction, we have uh, the reconstruction of this guy with a minus, right? So, that would be tau y x times uh, u minus partial partial x tau y x times u times delta y by 2 times delta x delta z, right? Uh, which direction is the second one acting? On the south. 
in the negative x direction, right? So this would this would come with a with a minus. Okay, this will come with a minus because it's acting in this direction, and then we still multiply with the velocity. Okay, so we have north and south. Then uh, what about the front face? Front face we have tau z x, right? I multiply this with with u only, right? Because this is still the force acting in the x direction. And then because it is front face, it would be a plus partial partial z. I think I made a mistake here. Uh, these two should be partial y, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Question. With what? North and south, I multiply with u, right? We will, right? I have multiplied with u. Which side? Here, here, yeah. So I have taken the force here. So the question is do we multiply with u or not? So this arrow indicates the force. I am multiplying this with u, right? That is what I mean. I do not mean that you multiply this again with u, right? So this is already multiplied with u, right? Pressure times the area itself is your force. I multiply that with velocity. Right? Does it clear your question? So don't worry about uh, this part here. Okay. So what is uh, tau y x times delta x delta z? That is the force, right? I multiply that with u, right? Only to get an impression about whether it is positive or negative. I'm drawing these uh, these arrows here, right? Okay. So this is already so this effect is basically what we have on the left hand side, right? Okay. Now what about the front face? It will be tau z x times u plus partial partial z tau z x times u delta z by 2 multiplied with delta x delta y, right? This is acting in the positive direction. We multiplied with u. When it comes to the back face, we have tau z x times u minus partial partial z tau z x times u delta z by 2 times delta x delta y, right? This will come with a negative, right? Because this was act force acting in the negative uh, x direction, we multiply with u, okay? Now, um, what is uh, what is all these terms that what we have written? We have, we have written down uh, all the forces, right? Or all the, the net, essentially the net rate of work done because of all the forces that act in the x direction, okay? Now, all these should be summed up right, to get the net rate of work done by all the forces together, okay. So that is what we are going to do. So I am going to sum up all these things which will give us the w dot in the x direction of the forces, okay. Now if I want to sum it, sum it up, uh, I want to kind of want you to ask you to look at it before I sum it up, okay. So what are the terms that will remain in this thing if I sum all these things? So start with the west phase, yeah. This one, uh, because if you take the the face here, right? So this was the west face. We had pressure acting in this direction, and then the tau acting in this direction. So the pressure, uh, so which is negative here? This one is negative here, right? Is that correct? Okay. What about the east face? East face is correct. Negative acting in the negative x, tau x acting in the positive. Okay. So this is this is a mistake. Okay. Thank you. What about the north and south? Are they correct? Okay. Uh, front and bottom, front and back, fine, okay. Then uh, what terms uh, will remain and what will go away if I club these things? What about PU and uh, minus PU, right? When I club all these things, they will cancel, okay. Uh, what about tau xx times U and minus tau xx times U? So essentially this, this goes away, right? This and this goes away and uh, this and this goes away. Right? So essentially the first terms of the uh, Taylor series expansion, right, will all get cancelled, isn't it? So essentially uh, if you look at here, uh, this goes away with this and then similarly uh, this term goes away with this term, right? Okay. So what we uh, end up is essentially we end up with only the second terms and the second terms are, are what? Are partial partial x right with a minus here and uh, there is a mi there is a plus times minus here so this is also a minus right so we have one so these are two halves sum up to one right 
So, that will give me uh, minus that will give me. Uh, so, essentially, if I look at W dot because of the uh, forces in the x direction, right, uh, that will give me minus partial partial x p times u, right, because of the summation of uh, this, uh, this guy and this guy, right, okay, times we have uh, delta x delta y delta z that I have not written down, okay, I will write it down later. What else we have? We have uh, these two terms, right, that is essentially tau x x u and uh, here, right, so this is a plus, right, we have two minus here and then there is a plus here, okay. So, we have these two terms also summing up to 1 with a positive sign. So, this will be how much? This will be plus plus partial partial x tau x x times u multiplied with uh, delta x delta y delta z which I have not written down. Similarly, we have uh, plus right partial partial y tau y x times u, okay, fine. So, this will be plus partial partial y tau y x times u multiplied with delta x delta y delta z and then we have plus partial partial z tau z x times u. All of these guys are multiplied with uh, the elemental volume, okay, fine. So, we have now written down the rate of work done expression, okay. Uh, now, instead of going through this again for each of the phases, can we guess the rate of work done by the force in the y and z directions. We can easily guess, right. Uh, so, that would be what would be the, then what will be the total rate, uh, okay, let me write down the rate of work done in the y direction, then we will write down the total rate, okay. So, this will be how much by analogy, by looking at the first, uh, this equation, right. We can uh, write down here, this would be, this would come out to be minus partial partial y p times v, okay, plus partial partial x, this would be tau x y, right, this would be x y multiplied with v, right, okay, multiplied with v plus partial partial y tau double y times v, okay, plus partial partial z tau z y times v, right. Essentially, the second index should be the same for all these, right? They are all should be y because it is the forces acting in the y direction, okay? All these guys are multiplied with what? Delta x, delta y, delta c, okay? Fine? Okay. Uh, all right. Then we can, of course, write down what is the rate of work done in the z direction again. So, that would be minus partial partial y p times what? W. Okay, yeah, this is z, good, times p times w, okay, plus partial partial x times tau x z multiplied with w plus partial partial y tau y z multiplied with w, partial partial z tau z z multiplied with w, we have the elemental volume that is delta x delta y delta c, okay. Okay, we have all these three, uh, now we can club all of them into a, a total rate of work done term, okay. So, that would be what? W dot, right, the net rate of work done because of all the surface forces uh, is what? So, we have these three terms, partial partial x, partial partial y, partial partial z with pressure multiplied with u. Can we write a, using a, a Nabla notation? If I were to write, it would be minus grad, right? with we multiplied with what? Dot what? P times u bar, right? That would give me uh, all these three terms, okay. Uh, again, of course, this is multiplied with the volume which I have not written. Plus, we have uh, several terms here which uh, of course, I can repeat them here again. So, that would be partial partial x u tau x x, partial partial y u tau y x, partial partial z tau uh, z x times u plus I am just writing down here again uh, plus partial partial y uh, v tau partial partial x v times tau x y 
3 times tau y y partial partial z tau z times y times v plus we have w tau x z w tau y z tau z z times w ok. So, all these guys multiplied with delta x delta y delta z right is that correct or any mistakes in the summing up. We can of course, write this in a compact notation right using uh, using the index notation right in which we can club all these terms that we have uh, uh, all these terms we have here ok because you have it on your notes uh, this was what this was the w dot equals ok uh, minus del dot p u bar that is what we have ok plus uh, we had these uh, 9 terms right. Uh, so, I can use index notation and then club them all of them up into what how do I write it partial partial x j ok times u i tau i j right would that give me all the 9 terms it will give me right it will give me all the 9 terms times delta x delta y delta z right. So, this you have to verify because there is a uh, double subscript there is a repetition of the subscript that will add to summation ok. So, essentially what you have to do is you have to substitute i equals 1 2 3 and j equals 1 2 3 at a time. So, essentially choose uh, j equals 1 and plug in i equals 1 2 3 repeat and then plug in j equals 2 and then repeat again for all the i's and so on and because there is a, a repeated index they are all sum to they will all sum up ok. So, you can write of kind of write this in a index notation like this ok. Very good. So, essentially we we found the work done by the surface forces. Now, uh, there is also a uh, amount of work done because of the uh, gravity right essentially that one. So, that we will integrate using a source term ok. So, let us call this source term as sum S e ok. This is because of the work done uh, on the fluid particle let us say because of body forces ok. That is what we have. Now, let us look at the net rate of heat transfer term right. So, the net rate of heat transfer right to the fluid particle is what we want to look at now ok. Uh, so, we will consider net rate of heat transfer because of conduction ok. We are not con considering the effects of uh, radiation ok. So, what do we what do we have? We have uh, we will consider again the fluid element which is x y z and the heat flux vector that we have q bar is a basically q x i hat q y j hat plus q z k hat right. Essentially, we have 3 components of the heat flux vector ok. Uh, again, if we define this q bar at the centroid that is at x y z, we can reconstruct this on the phases ok. On the phases what would that be? That would be essentially the heat flux that is coming in at heat flux rate would be q x minus partial q x by partial x delta x by 2 and the heat flux that is leaving through the phase would be q x plus partial q x by partial x delta x by 2. Similarly, we have the heat flux coming in here this is q y minus partial q y by partial y delta y by 2 and through here we have q y plus partial q y by partial y delta y by 2. Similarly, in the z direction so this would be q z minus partial partial z q z delta z by 2 and whatever is leaving through the front face would be q z plus partial q z by partial z delta z by 2 ok. So, we have all these uh, heat flux rates that are coming in and leaving ok. So, the heat flux is coming through the west face and leaving through the east face ok. So, we have to look at what is the net rate of heat transfer added to the fluid particle. So, q dot that is added 
would be what? Would be essentially whatever is being added from the west face would consider as positive, whatever is leaving from the east face would be negative, okay. So, this would come out to be q x minus partial q x by partial x delta x by 2, okay. I will first consider the x direction, okay. So, this is being multiplied with delta y delta z would give me the heat transfer rate because this is a flux, okay. So, I multiply with delta y delta z, this is being added and then what is leaving the east face? This quantity is leaving the east face, right. So, this is uh, minus q, this is minus q x plus partial q x by partial x delta x by 2 times delta y delta z, okay. That is being leaving. So, what terms will remain here? Uh, again, q x gets cancelled and then we have two halves of the partial derivative term here. So, they will add up to 1. So, that will be minus partial q x by partial x times delta x delta y delta c would be the term that retains in the heat transfer in the x direction, okay. Okay, that means uh, what would be the total heat transfer that is being added to the fluid particle? This would be a summation of the x, y and z components, okay. That will be minus partial q x by partial x, minus partial q y by partial y, partial q z by partial z times delta x delta y delta c. So, what is this? This is nothing but we have the q bar vector, right, and then we have nabla operator. How can I write this? This would be minus, is it a divergence or a gradient? It will be a divergence, right, it will be a divergence del dot q bar, right, times delta x delta y delta c, right, okay. So, we can simply write like this, this is the total heat added. All right, now we are in a position to uh, write down our total equation, okay, the energy equation that is uh, rho times d uh, before we do that, I want to simplify this to uh, let us say in terms of temperature. Uh, so, what is, what does Fourier's law of heat conduction tell us? About heat flux vector and the temperature. What is Fourier's law of heat conduction for Q bar? Q bar equals minus K grad T, right? There is a minus here, okay. Uh, wh wh where does the minus come from? because heat flows in the direction of decreasing temperature gradient, okay, okay. So, essentially that is why you have a minus grad T. Now, we can plug back this into the above equation that we have. So, which gives us Q uh, equals, so there is a minus here in this equation, okay, and there is a minus here. If I plug in substitute for Q bar as minus K grad T, we are going to get del dot K grad T, right. This is the heat added to the fluid particle, okay. All right. So, we are going to look at now the total uh, essentially the energy equation, okay, that is given by rho times d e d t, okay, e equals what are the terms we have? We have the net rate of work done on the fluid particle that is uh, how much? That was minus del dot p u bar, okay, right, is not it correct, okay, plus we have this uh, nine expressions, right, this uh, gigantic expressions which we kind of uh, wrote down in a compact form, okay. I will write it in a compact form here and then later on if you need it we will expand it. So, that was do partial partial x j u i tau i j, right. Is that correct? Yeah. Would that give us all the nine terms, okay. Plus what else we have? K del dot k grad t coming from the heat plus we have a source term for the gravity S e, okay. So, all these terms, this is our energy equation, all right. Now, now what is this energy that we have for a fluid particle? What does it contain? E, the total energy that you have for a fluid particle is a summation of internal energy, right, which we usually represent in thermodynamics with u, but here we already have u as well as u bar, okay. So, we will represent with another letter e, okay. So, this is the 
little e is the internal energy for the fluid particle plus you have kinetic energy that is half of u square plus v square plus w square, right. Is this u v w same as the u v w we wrote before or different? It is the same, right, should be the same. Uh, plus what else we have? We have the potential energy, okay. So, we have the potential energy as well, so which is given by g times some elevation, okay. Now, this potential energy that we have, can be thought of in two different ways, okay. One is uh, the way we write it here in which the fluid particle or fluid element is uh, storing potential energy that is one way to look at it. The other way is to look at in terms of some work being done, okay, on the fluid particle by this gravitational field, okay. So, essentially we have a gravitational uh, field, okay, and this is doing uh, work on the fluid particle, okay. So, we would like, like to take the this approach in which case we do not have to write uh, the potential energy term explicitly here, rather we can have a source term, okay, uh, that takes care of doing work on the fluid particle, okay. As a result we do not have this term here, but we would add a corresponding source term on the right hand side of the equation, okay which is basically the gravitational field is doing work on the fluid particle, okay. Now, essentially we end up with only then uh, two terms, this E and uh, half u square plus v square plus w square. Now, we are doing all this because uh, it is a common practice to write an energy equation for the internal energy E, okay, rather than the total energy capital E, okay. So, essentially what we want to do is we initially want to have an equation for internal energy and thereafter depending on the fluid, we would like to have an equation for temperature, okay, if we have an incompressible fluid. So, uh, for that matter we are trying to get derive what does E contain in terms of the little e and the kinetic energies, okay. Now, uh, now what do we have to do? If we want to get an equation for little e, we have already an equation for capital E, we have to write an equation for the kinetic energies and subtract off that from the equation for capital E, right, then we can get an equation for uh, the little e that we have, okay. So, that is what we are going to do. So, now how do I get an equation for the kinetic energies? How do I get an equation for kinetic energy, okay. Essentially it is straightforward, you take the momentum equations, right, you already know the momentum equation. For example, if you take the x uh, momentum equation, what we have is, what is the time on term on the left hand side? We have rho times T u d t, right. So, what I can do is I can multiply this with u, I can write it as rho times u times T u d t, which is nothing but rho times half of d u square by d t, right. So, we got one term of this equation, right, like this. So, essentially what we have to do is we have to multiply the x momentum equation with u y momentum equation with v and the z momentum equation with w and then add all of them together, then we are going to get an equation for d by dt of this quantity that is half u square plus v square plus w square, right. Essentially what we have is we have an equation for, so our energy equation is rho times d e d t, right. This is nothing but rho times d e d t times e plus half u square plus v square plus w square. Now eventually we want to write an equation for rho d e d t right. So, we are trying to come up with an equation for this quantity that is rho times d by dt of the kinetic energy, okay. So, which we just found out that we can easily simply multiply the momentum equations on both sides with uh, the corresponding velocity and then add them together, okay. So, uh, if I write the momentum equation which you would help me write here. So, what would be uh, rho times du dt? for the momentum equation. We had, you have to kind of flip your pages back and then tell me what is rho du dt. That is minus partial p partial x, right, plus partial partial x tau x x partial partial y tau y x plus partial partial z tau z x, right. 
plus we had some source term that we wrote it as S m x ok. So, this is our momentum equation in the x direction ok. So, we will multiply this with u ok that would give me rho u d u d t which is nothing but rho times half d by d t of u square equals minus u times partial p partial x plus u times partial partial x tau x x uh, u times partial partial y tau y x plus u times partial partial z tau z z x plus u times s m x right straightforward we just multiplied that. Now, uh, let us go back ok and try to write an equation also for v ok then we can kind of club it together. So, that will be rho half d by d t of v square would be how much minus v partial p partial y plus v times anybody partial partial x tau x y v times partial partial y tau y y v times partial partial z tau z y right plus v times s m y ok. Ok, now we do not have to write the third expression, uh, but uh, what does these, these two equations have to do? We have to kind of club them together right to get half u square plus half v square we have to sum these two equations together plus we have to add the w equation as well ok. We add all of that and then we realize that d rho d by d t of uh, with a half u square plus v square plus w square would be would be what would be a really long expression right. Uh, what will be the first uh, term of that you have minus u partial p partial x right and you have minus v partial p partial y and you have minus w partial p partial z what is that can we write in a vector form minus u bar dot grad p right plus we have again these terms that is u partial x all these things right. We have these uh, 9 terms right 3 from each of these equations which I am not repeating here. So, we have so many of these terms plus what does the last term we have u times s m x plus v times s m y that is nothing but u bar dot s m bar right. If I represent my source as a vector then it will be u bar dot s m bar ok. Now, uh, what we will do is we will kind of subtract it off in our mind and then write try to write the total equation that we have here ok, which I am going to take your help. So, essentially what will be the equation for then rho d e d t minus uh, half of rho d by d t of u square plus v square plus w square that is nothing but your rho d little e d t is not it because this capital E contains this plus e plus this half kinetic energy square. So, this is the equation we want to write. Now, you have to go back and see uh, what are the terms that retain get retained here when we write to this equation. What is the pressure term in the in this case? The pressure term was del dot minus was there a minus minus del dot p u bar. So, if I expand this what will this be? This will be uh, minus u bar dot grad p right uh, minus p times del dot u bar right. So, when I am subtracting this off I have uh, this term same as this term right. So, what term would retain only this minus p times del dot u gets retained ok. So, that would be that means my equation for rho d e d t would contain minus p times del dot u right because the equation for rho d capital E d t contains uh, this term which can be expanded into these two components and one of the component already exists in in the half kinetic energy equation ok. All right. So, we have this first term now what does the equation for rho d e d t contain in terms of the uh, tau x x tau i j stress tensor and u v w. What we had was we had a really long 9 terms just like here only thing was uh, these terms the u was inside the partial derivative right. 
if you go back what we had was we had partial partial x u tau x x u tau y x and so on right. So, if you expand that in a product rule this is one of the terms right. So, only the other term remains is that correct yes ok. So, only the other term remains in which case what will be that term look like that looks like the, de the partial derivative should operate on the velocity instead of the shear stresses that is the only term that retains ok. Then uh, we can write it as plus ok. Can you help me write this what term gets retained? So, if I if I write it here your E derivative equation contained partial partial x u tau x x right whereas your K E equation contains contains term like u tau x x by dou x right. So, in the equation for little e we will have only a term that is tau x x times partial u partial x right so, and so on ok. So, this will be tau x x partial u partial x plus tau y x partial u partial y tau z x partial u partial z ok plus we will have what we will have tau tau x y partial v partial x tau y y partial v partial y plus tau z y partial v partial z plus tau x z partial w partial x plus tau y z partial w partial y plus tau z z partial w partial z is that correct any mistakes. So, the second index should be y and x y z and the first equation should go as the first terms that should be compatible with the denominator of the partial derivative right fine this is perfect this is correct ok. So, we now just have simplified these equations plus what is the remaining terms we have coming from the capital E equation. So, so that is uh, essentially uh, we have this del dot k grad t as well right. So, that was del dot k grad t plus uh, coming to the source term what was the source term we had for the capital E equation. We wrote something like S e to account for all the gravity and all the body forces and uh, in the equation for kinetic energy we had u bar dot S m bar right remember here ok. So, now I define another uh, new source term that source term for little e would be I would call it S little e which is nothing but S capital E minus u bar dot S m bar ok. I would just simply write it as S little e. Of course, this also can be simplified minus p del dot u plus I can write this as tau i j uh, what partial u j partial x i plus del dot k grad t plus s little e ok that is a uh, very simple equation ok. Ok now we got an equation for uh, internal energy let us take a particular case of uh, an incompressible fluid or an incompressible flow in which case uh, your internal energy e uh, for a for a fluid ok which is incompressible uh, what is little e uh, the uh, e is nothing but your internal energy internal energy can be expressed in terms of specific heat and temperature for a fluid you have only one specific heat right it is just C we call it C times T ok where C is the uh, specific heat and T is your temperature ok. What about for an incompressible fluid this quantity del dot u bar 0 right this is 0 for an incompressible fluid which we have established in the context of mass conservation ok. So, that means, uh, if we go to this equation we can plug in E equals C T in this equation and this term goes to 0. So, the only things we are left with is these 9 gigantic terms and then the heat conduction and so on ok. So, we can now write down an equation for temperature that is the energy equation for uh, an incompressible fluid that is rho times C times D capital D by D little t ok equals 
this expression tau ij partial uj by partial xi plus del dot k grad t plus s little e, okay. So that is your, uh, your energy equation, your energy equation for uh, an incompressible fluid, okay. Of course, we have not yet closed how to calculate these shear stresses, right. We do not have a model uh, about these shear stresses that we will do and uh, that is what defines a fluid, okay, uh, to be either Newtonian or non-Newtonian that we have to see. Questions till now? So, you essentially solve this energy equation in terms of temperature for an incompressible fluid, okay. Okay, so this is uh, nice and good. Uh, but for compressible flows, you would usually work with enthalpy, okay. If you are dealing with compressible flows, which we are actually not discussing the solution algorithms here as part of this course, but for the sake of completeness, I would write down here. So, if you have a compressible flow, you would get an equation, uh, you will write equations in terms of enthalpy because that is much more easier to work with, okay. So, enthalpy would be summation of what? your internal energy and, and, the, and the flow work, right, the product of the pressure times, times the what, specific volume. So, this is little v, okay. Uh, we will work with this equation. So, this is nothing but what? So, I can write this as E plus, uh, so this is nothing but E plus P upon rho, okay, 1 upon density is your specific volume. So, your E is what? So, if I write your, so I can write uh, H equals, uh, e plus, so my E, E is Cp, okay. So, I can also calculate what is my uh, total enthalpy, right, or stagnation enthalpy, okay. That would be what? That would be H naught equals H plus the kinetic energy, right, essentially plus half U square plus V square plus W square, okay. So, that means I can plug in H equals E plus P upon rho plus half u square plus v square plus w square. Uh, now, we can rewrite this expression as h naught equals what is little e plus half u square plus v square plus w square. That is my capital E, right, without the gravity terms in there. So, this is capital E plus p upon rho, okay. Now, what I can do is uh, for compressible flow, I would write an equation for h naught, okay, the total enthalpy, okay, that would be rho times d h naught by d t, which is also the same as partial partial t rho h naught plus del dot rho h naught times u bar, right. We just introduce the uh, transformation equals uh, something on the right hand side, right. Now, how do we get this something on the right hand side? You plug in what is h naught? H naught is your e plus p by rho. Plug in e plus p by rho into this equation, right, which will give you d e by d t plus d by dt of p, right, with a minus, okay, plug into that. So, essentially um, get an equation for d e dt, okay, get an equation for d e dt, uh, substitute that back into this equation, okay, for d e dt. So, you will only get an extra term that is dp dt, right, that is what you will get. And uh, do you have an equation for d e dt or rho d e dt in that sense? We have already derived an equation for rho d e d t, okay. So, substitute that, then you would get an equation for this enthalpy and then you can finish an equation for total stagnation enthalpy uh, here in terms of the uh, tau, tau ij, u and pressure and so on, okay. That you can easily obtain by substituting for d rho d e d t from the previous equation we have already derived, okay.